Yes, it does appear based on the studies I was able to find on PubMed that creatine does promote 5-alpha reductase activity and therefore the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. And so it makes sense that it might promote some degree of hair loss as well as beard growth as well as the other effects of DHT. The way Huberman presents this is as though there are several studies suggesting that creatine can increase DHT, but as far as I can tell, this idea stems from a single study on male rugby players. In fact, it's the only study that the International Society of Sports Nutrition mentions in their reports as well. In this study, the creatine group took a high loading dose of 25 grams per day for seven days, and then the typical maintenance dose of five grams for two weeks thereafter. DHT levels did rise by 56% by the end of the loading phase, and remain 40% above baseline by the end of the maintenance phase. On the other hand, if anything, the placebo group saw a bit of a reduction in DHT. And this is what led to the idea that creatine can promote hair loss because higher DHT levels can accelerate hair loss. However, it's notable that DHT levels did remain well within the normal range the entire time, and the creatine group started with lower levels than the placebo group. And finally, they did not measure actual hair growth or loss. So for all these reasons and more, we probably shouldn't lend too much weight to this single study in isolation. But fortunately, a brand new 12-week randomized controlled trial did actually measure markers of hair growth. 38 resistance-trained men completed the study and took either 5 grams of creatine or placebo every day for 12 weeks. There were no significant differences in total or free testosterone, DHT, or measures of hair growth such as hair count, density, and thickness between the two groups. So based on the best available evidence, it does not appear as though creatine affects hair growth one way or another.